time to talk about shoes that just ain't working. What's up guys, I hope you're safe and healthy and happy and doing okay. Today, we're gonna talk about it, the shoes that just are not working for me. Everybody has shoes that they get and they try out. Maybe they're good for the first couple of runs and then after that, they just kind of fall off and feel not so great. So today we're gonna to talk about a couple shoes that haven't made it to 50 miles that will not because they just don't work for me. And then we're gonna talk about two other shoes that have made it to 50 miles but just aren't working for me anymore. But keep in mind before we get started that just because these shoes didn't work for me, it doesn't mean they won't work for you. Everybody has a different stride, different foot type, different running gait and whatever technical term you wanna use. We're all different. So just because something doesn't work for me, it doesn't matter. It might be like the best shoe you've ever worn. I also want to thank you guys for being so patient with me. I have not been running as much as I previously was because I've been having some PF slash knee issues. Um, so some full reviews are going to take a little bit more time to get through, which I know they already take a little bit of time. But just keep in mind, I'm just one person. I don't run 100 miles a week. So it does take a little bit to cycle through some of these shoes. Oh, and one more thing before we get started, I do wanna let you guys know that the majority of these shoes in this video were sent to me by Running Warehouse or by the company themselves. However, they don't know I'm making this video. They can't tell me what to say. And all of my opinions, obviously, cause no one would want their shoe in this video, I guess, are my own like they always are. All right, so first let's start with the two shoes that did make it to 50 miles that I won't be running in again. And the first one is the Nike Tempo Next Percent. So I just fully reviewed this shoe on my channel. I won't go too crazy and rant about it, but uh, my first couple of runs in the Tempo Next Percent were really good and fun and fast. Uh, and I felt like it was easy to maintain faster paces in this shoe, which is still the case. However, uh, if you are doing anything under your absolute tempo, tempo pace, then this shoe is going to fall apart, or at least it did for me. And I know you're probably thinking, well, yeah, tempo's in the name. Yes, it is. But Nike also markets this shoe as a tempo day slash slash daily trainer, which means it's supposed to be a lot more versatile than just a tempo day shoe. And for me, this couldn't be further from versatile. If you just want to go easy for a mile, take it down a notch or whatever the case is, it feels super awkward on your foot and kind of unstable. Well, not kind of, really unstable. Uh, so just for me, it's not gonna be worn again. Um, we had fun while we were together, but it's time that we part and it goes back on the shelf. Well, that wasn't as graceful as I wanted it to be. The next shoe on my list that I did get to 50 miles but won't be running it again is the A6 Gel Kayano Light. Now, hear me out here. This is a really good stability option for a shoe, and I would pick this over the regular Kayano every day, hands down. You don't even have to ask. So I really did enjoy the shoe for a while, until I didn't. As you guys may or may not know, my friend Kate ran a 50K. Check out the video here. And I wore this shoe for that, and I figured it would be a good, stable option, just keeping it, you know, mild-paced, and I would have no issues. Well, uh, after the 10 miles that I ran, I had a really weird knee pain. And it's not a sensation that I have felt in other shoes. And you might say, like, well, maybe it's just that stability shoes don't agree with you. I've run in other stability shoes for that distance. So I don't know, I, I'm not really sure what's happening here with me in this shoe, but all I know is that if I take it long distance, I start to feel some knee tweaking. And to be honest with you, I'm still kind of recovering for that. For me, maybe there's just something that doesn't quite mix for longer distances. So unfortunately, to avoid that stress on my knees, I'm gonna have to put this one on the shelf as well. All right, so now let's talk about some shoes that won't be making it to 50 miles. The first one is the Saucony Triumph 18. If you guys have been watching my channel for a while now, you know that I loved the Saucony Triumph 17. It was one of my favorite shoes of 2020 and I just couldn't get enough of its big, fat, 
pillowy yet bouncy goodness. It was just, it was awesome. So naturally I was really excited about the 18 and when I got it, put it on my feet and went for a run, I just didn't feel the same magic that I did in the 17. I don't know what it is. It's just not the same. It's like a movie where the sequel isn't as good as the first, which is pretty much always. Um, that's how I felt about the Triumph 18. And you guys know I love Saucony shoes. I love Power Run Plus. But this just wasn't it for me. It felt kind of dead. And if anybody ever asks me if they should get the 17 or the 18, I'll always tell them get a discounted 17 because it's cheaper and it feels better. I do think this colorway is really nice, although I know some of you probably hate it. Next up is the Skechers Razor Plus. Right off the bat with this shoe, I didn't feel like it had the same oomph and cool feeling midsole that the Razor 3 had, despite the fact that it has hyperburst. I don't know what's different about it, or maybe nothing is and it's just me. Um, but I felt like it was a little bit too low to the ground for me and kind of firm. After a couple of runs, I did feel like it got a little bit better, but then it sort of went back the other way. And I don't know, I just think for me, this doesn't really work. I think this is supposed to be like a tempo day slash lightweight daily trainer, leaning towards that lightweight daily trainer vibe. And while I appreciate that, I don't think that uh, I have enough here to work with for like everyday use. And when it comes down to it, there are other shoes in this category that I would grab before the Razor Plus. Uh, so likely not gonna make it to full review. However, in the Razor line, they did just come out with the Razor XS which I recently just reviewed on the channel and do really like and can absolutely see myself taking this 250 miles. I just think it's gonna do better for me than this did. The last shoe on my list is a carbon plated shoe. And I'll be honest with you, it's hard for me to take any of those to 50 miles because I'm just not doing enough really high intensity work uh, to put it to the test all the time and I'm not gonna take it out on some daily training run and not give it like the true and tried test. But this one here will definitely not make it to 50. And that is the New Balance RC Elite. I really wanted to like this shoe. I was very excited about it, highly anticipating it. And I just thought it was like the coolest looking thing. I had liked the TC from New Balance that came out prior to this, uh, which was a carbon plated shoe that New Balance has since deemed like the tempo day you know, partner to this shoe. Um, so I thought this could only mean good things. I really overpronated quite a bit in the TC and I was hoping that would be alleviated in the RC Elite and thought maybe it would be because it feels slightly lower to the ground. But unfortunately, this is an overpronating machine for me and makes it pretty uncomfortable to run in. I like the fuel cell foam, the upper is pretty nice, and I think that the outsole is so badass and we never see anything really like this. It's not the typical kind of outsole and it grips onto stuff really, really well. But the problem for me with some of these New Balance shoes is that they create this flare on the outside, this lateral flare, and it just begs my foot to go inward like this. And in this shoe, the uh, the archway, the arch, is pretty darn narrow, which just begs me to go this way even more so. Uh, so it really doesn't work for me. That being said though, if you have a neutral foot strike, guys, this is a great option. But unfortunately, my relationship with the RC Elite has ended. Which actually just reminds me, that isn't the last shoe. I have one more carbon plated shoe that won't make it to 50. Hang on, let me go get it. Okay, sorry for lying, uh, but this is the last shoe and it is the Brooks Hyperion Elite 2. So unlike the RC Elite from New Balance, this shoe has a wider base here. We have nice wide forefoot. It doesn't go too narrow in the midfoot. And uh, I felt like it was a lot more stable. So I was really excited about it. I was into the forefoot upper material and I really liked the way the foam felt underfoot. But this shoe for me has a major flaw that makes it impossible to use for even one mile. And that is the heel counter. If you can see here, it kind of curves inward and it digs into my Achilles like no other shoe. Last summer when I was running in the Hyperion Elite 2, I did mile repeats and my Achilles was shredded after that. I thought maybe it'd be like a one-time thing, so I took it out again, same problem. And I also wore a Band-Aid on one of those times 
and it still went right through the band-aid and I was bleeding again. Obviously that's not something that you want to deal with in any shoe so I immediately stopped using it. I'm hoping that in a three, if there is a Hyperion Elite 3, that they'll fix this. I know I'm not the only person who has this problem so if you have had it, leave a comment down below. Um, but if you have tried the shoe and it works for you and you don't have this problem, God bless you because I don't know how you do it. It just does not work for me. So that's it. Those are all the shoes right now that just aren't working for me that you probably won't see again on the channel. I thought it would be good to do this video since I did it once before, just to keep you guys updated on what's going on behind the scenes. Despite what I said about them, if you're interested in buying any of these shoes, don't believe me, don't care, whatever the case may be, I will link them all down below in the description of this video. Keep in mind the majority of these links, not all, have to see if they're all on the website, but the majority of these links will be affiliate links with Running Warehouse. It doesn't mean much for you, it just helps out my channel so I can keep making these videos and keeping you guys entertained when you're bored. Well guys, that concludes this video of the shoes that didn't work for me, part two. If you enjoyed this video, please like it down below and subscribe and when you're done with all that, hit that notifications bell down below so you can find out every time I upload a new video. Maybe if I just bend this back all the way. I think that'll work. I have another video for you guys on Sunday, but in the meantime, get out there, get on the grind, and don't forget to run like heller. Injury free, of course. See you next time. And I could rank up for my kid. So for my friend's 50k, so my fr so blah, 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 blah.